Good day everyone. I am Edgardo Hinayon. I am known to many as Pastor Ed Hinayon. I just want to address you to share the purpose why I created my channel. This channel has been created for one and only purpose. Knowing Christ and making Him known. And I just want to share that these videos were created to share spiritual insights, spiritual messages. And these videos are created also so that I could share spiritual blessing to viewers of this channel. So I look forward for for you, for those who will be uh, watching and uh, subscribing this channel, this is my prayer that this channel will be a blessing to you. I just want to pray. Heavenly Father, we just bless you. I thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege that you have, that we have for me to create this channel for one purpose knowing Christ and making Him known. Bless us, Father. Bless this channel. To those who will be watching, to those who will be subscribing, it is my prayer that everything they watch, lesson, messages of this, from this channel will be a blessing to them and I, will, I can impart spiritual insights for your glory. Lord, it is my prayer that through this channel, the gospel will proclaim, proclaiming Christ to all peoples. And it is my prayer that in this upcoming videos that you want me to create, I pray that all will be, this will be a blessing. Lord, be glorified in this channel. All this I pray. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen.
Good day everyone. Today we will be sharing to you through this video the overview, the background of the five devotional series of which three of them has already been uploaded in my YouTube channel. This five devotional series has been a blessing first and foremost to me and I intentionally posted it first as a devotional series in Facebook, in chat groups, but now in a video version that, so that it could be a blessing to many, not only to my friends, but to those who will be watching through my YouTube channel. These five devotional series are first God's Master Plan devotional series, the Gospel of Christ devotional series, God's Faithfulness devotional series, Man's Watchfulness devotional series, and Missions Ministries devotional series. These five, I will be sharing to you its overview and background in the next five videos but today I will be sharing the, about the first devotional series about God's master plan devotional series before I get started let us pray Heavenly Father I bless you I thank you for today thank you God for the privilege Lord for the opportunity Lord to address and to share from my heart your word through this video through my through the youtube channel that you lead me to create lord anoint my lips and let it be lord that everything i be sharing be a blessing to those who are watching this video Holy Spirit, teach me, guide me. You are our teacher today. And Holy Spirit, open up understanding to those who are watching this. Let them receive according to your purpose. Lord, thank you. We commit the rest of our time. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. Let us get started with the first devotional series about God's master plan. This God's master plan, each letter has one lesson. And let us begin this with its theme verse. Our theme verse for this series is John 15, 16. It is written, you do not trust me. But I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. But in this verse, I take attention of the first part of the verse. This first part are three areas that I want to share. The first part of the verse is says, you did not choose me. But I chose you. It talks about relationship with God. It talks about is eternal purpose that man will restore to himself. And the second part of the series is and appointed you to go. This talks about our responsibility from God. After restoring us to himself, he wants us to share this truth that many more will be restored to him. Third, and bear fruit, fruit that will last. It is the intention of God that not only man will restore and man will share this gospel to many, but God desire not only for us here while still on this earth, but His purpose is an eternal fruit, looking toward eternity with Him. And these are the three. 
truth that ever be shared. Let us begin with our first devotional series about God's master plan. God's master plan, each letter represents one lesson. And each lesson have several verses. So, so before let us get started, just have your Bible if you if you desire to, just follow to the verses that I'll be sharing. And just allow the Spirit to teach us today. Okay, first letter G governance by God's sovereign choice to having a restored relationship with him to justification in our private life and it is inspired by the scripture written in Romans 5 1 and 2 that it is God's sovereign choice to that man be restored to him by justifying man by faith and this is the desire of God that it's through faith that we will be justified to that restored relationship with him and this restored relationship with him could only be done through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 3 as Paul thus remind the Corinthian church that the first and most important truth that we need to understand that Christ died for our sins he was buried and resurrected after three days and this is the redemption of God every one of us must understand that without the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ salvation is not possible but praise God it is finished Christ has redeemed us and through his death and resurrection, God desires also that the power of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ will bring new life to those who will receive him and believe him and will experience new life in Christ. And this is our letter of ordaining the new birth experience as it is written in John 3 3 to 5 it says the scripture says no one no, can, no one can see the kingdom of God no one can enter the kingdom of God until he is born again it is a born again experience to the miracle power of God that man will be saved and will have a new life it is the new birth. It is God ordained. And from this new birth experiences that man should and must go through. This new life he, he must receive. It's only and there to be saved. But the desire of God is to those who receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, preaching the new birth experience, they will understand the Lordship of Christ. In our letter D, directed by the Lordship of Jesus Christ. From salvation, Christ Jesus is now our Lord. What do you mean by Lord? It, he is our Master. As Jesus taught the disciples in Luke 9, 23 and 24, that if anyone want to follow him, must deny himself, take his cross daily, and follow him. 
So the Lordship of Christ is surrendering our life to Him. Let Him lead us, direct us as our Lord. As Christ became our Lord, we need to live this life. As He became our Savior and Lord, we need to live this new life in Him. How? Is, is it with our own strength? Our own way? No. But it is through God resources. And that is our letter S. Sustained by God's resources. So our life will be sustained by His resources. As it's written in 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. That is the divine nature He shared to us. All His promises written in the scriptures have been available to us. That we may live godliness. That we may live life pleasing to God. So, we could live this new life as, as Jesus our Lord through His own resources. It is through God's power. No more, no less. And God does not want us only to live this new life with victory in His resources alone. He wants us that this new life, our restored relationship with Him, we will multiply to many people. So, this is our private life. And this is the purpose of God, the first part of His purpose, of His, of His master plan. This God's master plan, as I, as I shared to you this first part, is about our restored relationship with God. It is His sovereign choice. So before we could we go to our to the second part, we just I just want you to pray with me and allow and pray to God that this great plan of God, this first part plan of God, will be internalized, will be just in our spirit, so that our relationship with Him will grow, and that. This first part of his master plan be imparted to many people. So just pray. So pray with me as we close this first part. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for give us understanding, Lord, of your master plan. That in gives in this God's master plan. The first, the first part of your plan, Lord, is to have that restored relationship with you. It is governance by your sovereign choice to have a restored relationship with you toward justification in our private life. And it is through the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and through his death and resurrection, we have given us, O oh God, ordaining us the new birth experience. As we have that new life in you, we are directed by the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And this life of God in you, it is sustained by your resources. Lord, it is my prayer that this truth, O God, be internalized and will understand this, Lord, in our spirit, that this is your plan. Nothing, Lord, we could do with that first part because everything begins with you and our response is believing in you, beginning in repentance and believing in what Christ has done for us. Holy Spirit, it is my prayer that everyone who is listening or watching in this video each one will understand that your plan for us is that restored relationship in our private life. Holy Spirit, can it convict us, inspire us, continue to guide us as we move along 
in the second part of this series. Thank you, God, for this truth today. But I look forward, oh God, that those who are watching this video, as they will be watching on the next part of this master plan, Lord, just bless them, convict them, inspire them, they will truly they will know more about you. Lord, we thank you, we bless you. To all be the glory, honor, and majesty. In Jesus' mighty name. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. And to God be the glory. Day, everyone. This is now our second session. As we continue our overview of God's master plan. And the second session, part two of God's master plan, the public life. Before we get started, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, today that you have given us this day again to know more about your master plan. I pray, God, to those who are watching this video that they will understand and learn more of your word. Just as your mouthpiece, Holy Spirit, let your anointing flow freely to those who will be watching that will understand everything that we'll be learning today. Lord, I submit to you, God, this session. All the things I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now let us have our review in our first session, the part one of our private life. We know that God's master plan begins with our private life. That the G governance by God by God appointed by God's sovereign choice in our private life. He desired to us to be restored to himself to our justification. And this justification that God desires has been accomplished through the death at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And to his death of resurrection, God now has that hope for us. And that is let our letter O, ordaining the new birth experience. And through this new birth experience, we'll have new life in Christ. And through this new birth experience, God decided not only that we'll be born again, having new life, but in that letter D, directed by the Lordship of Christ. That under his lordship, we will learn as, it, as he is our master now. Our new life belongs to not, of, not to us, but to Jesus now, our Lord. And this lordship of Christ who directed us could be done only and be accomplished, not by any human resources, but to that letter us sustained by God's resources. It is the resources. By his power alone and resources that we could live this life, this new life, this private life. Then as we experience this private life, this, this first part of the plan of God. God desires us to continue from our private life. He wants us to have our public life. And that is our lesson today. Part two, the public life. And this we will continue to that next letter, letter M. Multiplication by God's appointed mandate towards sanctification in the public life. And God desires that becoming born again, new life in Him. In this second part of our verse, in John 15, 16, it says, and appointed us to go. So did God has appointed us to go. And this inspired 
by Paul. As Paul said in John 15, 15 to 16, that he was called to be an apostle to the Gentiles. That he will be offering the Gentiles sanctified by the Holy Spirit to God. And this work of sanctification by the Holy Spirit, God desires it could be done not by one alone, by one man alone. That's why he built his church, as he, he said in Mar Matthew 16. Jesus built his church. And his church that he built, he raised up people. Ministerial gifts to equip us. And it's written in Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. That he appointed apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor teachers to equip the saints. Um, one person said perfection of the saints. Equip the saints for ministry of service. Toward maturity. To be like Christ. So God raised up people in the church to equip us. And as God will equip us to the church, God wants us to accomplish His appointed mandate. And that we call the Great Commission. And this mandate begins as we go to letter A, affirming us as witnesses. So we begin to become witnesses, affirming that the gospel. The people that he proclaimed at the season Acts 1 8. The purpose of the, the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost is as the Holy Spirit comes, he will give us power to be witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria to the other We are witnesses of the gospel, beginning from the early church down to the ages, and we belong to that. We become witnesses by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as what he said, God desires also to be his disciples. We go to that letter as not only affirming the truth, but serving as disciples. How could we serve as disciples? This is an inspiration in John 13, 34, 35. That the world will know when they will see that we love one another. And that love begins with the love of God, the agape love of God. When we love one another, the world will know that we are the disciples of Jesus. So, not only associates, but disciples. We'll be making disciples through that agape love of God. And how could we do the job as witnesses and disciples? We go to that letter T. Testifying and world vision. As Paul testified in Romans 15 20, that God, that he desires, his ambition is to preach the gospel to the regions beyond, to the region that Christ is not known. So, we, will, we need to testify in the regions beyond, in world missions, beyond our border, beyond our community, from our home, from our family, to the community near, near, near to us the city and beyond the borders even cross-culturally and we see as we testify in missions how do we do it do it we go to letter e institute it into the community we will go to the community we are not called not, not only to stay in the four corners of our church building to worship the lord to equip but we need to go out into the community into the working places so those who, who need Christ. So it is in the community, in the working places that we, that our testimony be heard. And many be, will know the Lord Jesus. That into this community, as Paul inspired, inspired the, the believer in Galatians 6, 9, 10, that let us not become aware in doing good. So, our testimony into the community, go doing good to people. And this doing good to people, especially to the fellow believers. This is the work of service. And this work of service into the community, God desires us to do that. 
And as we go into the community and justifying the, the gospel, the desire of God is not only there to multiply more people, but what what kind of people? And let's go to letter R. Reproduce Christ like this. And through these people that know Jesus, becoming disciples like us, all of us will grow into Christ likeness. We will reproduce Christ likeness from us to our to others as we make disciples. Beyond even our own borders, reproducing Christ like this is the character, that is transformation. The purpose of the gospel in our public life is transformation to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the gospel. And this is the end of public ministry. That many will be transformed by the power of God, by the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is our public life. And as we, as we live this public life, we have that appointed mandate. So, now, as we have this public life doing completion the Great Commission, what next? We will be learning that in the next section. In the third part of the next section, the heavenly life. That God that decided not only in our public life, as church of salvation, to the public life, doing ministry, preaching the gospel, making disciples, that decide to us for eternity. That is our lesson. Next session. I hope you, you, you receive this message, this lesson today. Will you learn? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray God to those who are watching this video, learning the lesson of our public life in you. We pray God that, Lord, really, you are called us not to be, not only to be saved in our private life, restored in you, Lord. You are our Savior, you are our Lord, and through your resources, Lord, you, you, know, you want us to go out, only us to go, to multiply by your mandate to the Great Commission and to the church, you do this, O oh God. And Lord, to the church, O oh God, we are the church. We became, we are, you affirm us as your witnesses, witnesses of the gospel by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord God, from affirmation, O oh God, we serve now as disciples through your love. The world, this world will know that you are the same because we love one another by your agape love. And this love, Lord God, uh, Lord, will be executed, Lord God. We can be, do it to testify this, the gospel in world missions, to people, Lord God, beyond. And we execute, Lord God, into the community, to, to the working places, outside our four corners of the church, that more people will come to know you in the communities, the, in they work in places. They will know the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you, God, that the many will be multiplied, come to know you, become witnesses also, becoming disciples. It is your purpose, O God. They will produce fresh likeness. That your church, as a church, we will grow in maturity, growing transformation from glory to glory into your likeness. Yes, O God, bless our public life for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day. Keep safe in Jesus. Living our public life to the glory of God. Thank you. Till next time, to God be the glory. now in our part three of our overview of God's master plan devotional series before we get started let us pray 
Heavenly Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for this another day you've given to us that we could continue, Lord God, of sharing, Lord, this overview of, of the part three of the God's master plan in your series. Lord, anoint your servant, anoint your word. I pray God to those who are watching this video, Lord, Holy Spirit, to you to get the understanding and pick them, inspire them, let the word make him understand God's master plan. I can meet you the rest of this time in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In our previous sessions, I've shared to you the first two as a review. Just want to emphasize that the same verse of this. God's master plan, the prayer series, is taken from John chapter 15, verse 16. As saying in the first part of that verse, saying, Do you not choose me, but I chose you and appoint you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last? And I have shared to you in the, the previous session, the part one, about our personal life. In that first, first portion of that verse, you did not choose me, but I chose you, that it started with God. Governance by God's sovereign choice into having a restored relationship with Him toward justification in the private life. So in our private life, God wants us to understand that it all started with Him. His plan that man be restored to himself. And it is done through his death and resurrection. And because Christ died and was resurrected from the dead, that hope for man has been possible. And through his death and resurrection, man has now that hope to have, to have that new birth experience ordaining of the new birth experience by god that god that god will grant to him or her that new life in christ and he became now your savior having been redeemed by his blood and after the new birth experience it now directed us by his lordship through the Lordship of Christ, our life now is not our own. We belong to Christ. And as we grow in His Lordship, God desires that through Him as our Savior and Lord, this life will be possible. We live this life through sustenance of God's resources. It is a sustaining resources of God that makes our life possible to live this new life in Christ. And we learn also that through this private life, God desires us to not only live for ourselves, our own private life, but He desires to live our life in the public life. That is the second part two in that second portion of the verse saying and upon you to go you have now God desires multiplication by God's appointed mandate towards sanctification sanctification the public life and this multiplication as God desires to multiply us through his church God builds his church and through his church it will multiply more, more people to be himself. And through the church, God desires that through the church that we belong to this church, is God is affirming us to be his witnesses. We became his witnesses. A mouthpiece of God of the gospel. And this, as witnesses, 
we now became disciples of Christ, serving as disciples of Christ. And as businesses and disciples of Christ, God wants us to testify in world mission beyond our borders to all peoples of the earth that many will know him and be drawn to himself. And this testimony of the gospel to all peoples will be executed into the communities, the working places, to our communities to go beyond the region. We are not just limited in our own local church, four corners of our church building, but we need to go out to the communities, to the working places where they, there are people who need Christ. And as we testify it into the communities, God decided to these people drawn to himself, we will produce Christ likeness. That's the goal of why we preach the gospel, multiplying to be Christ like, to grow in Christ likeness from glory to glory. And as we accomplish this responsibility through the sanctifying work brought by his power, we go now to that part three that we'll be discussing today. Now let us go to the part three, the heavenly life. And it is inspired in the same same verse in John 15, 16. As written in that verse, you don't trust me, but I trust you and appointed you to go bear fruit, fruit that will last. And let us take that last part. Bear fruit, fruit that will last. And let's go to that letter P. The sections by God's eternal purpose into the lasting fruit with God toward glorification in the heavenly life. And that is the desire of God, to be with him in eternity. As Paul wrote in his epistle to the Romans, as written in Romans 8, 18 and 19, that the suffering that we're experiencing now cannot be compared to the glory to be experiencing with God in authority. And how God will accomplish this. And let us go to that letter L. Liberating man to wholeness. As is written in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. As Paul said to the Thessalonian believers, that they will be sanctified body, soul, and spirit true and true, keep blameless and God is faithful to accomplish this and that is God's purpose while liberating man to wholeness because as, as we studied that man failed God he commits sin and is separated from God and God restored him through Christ's death and resurrection. And as he has been restored spiritually, body, soul, and spirit, the tripartite being of man, need to be liberated to wholeness. The last part of our life is that body to be made whole in that last day. And God desired that as God wants us to be whole again, as originally he created man, not only want us to be liberated to wholeness, let us go to that letter A. Approved by God to serve Him and reign with Christ in authority. As written in <clears throat> Revelation 5.10 that God's desire is that we will reign, reign with Him reign with Christ and serve God. That is his purpose, to serve him and to reign with Christ. First, for the first 1,000 years when he comes, then to eternity. And as God approved man to serve him and reign with him, let's go to that letter N. 
the necessity of heaven dwelling with God. Necessity of dwelling with God in heaven. And that need is not optional, but it's eternal. The eternal purpose of God. That He will reign, He will dwell with us. A certain Revelation 21, 1 and 3. That the old heaven and the old earth will pass away. And will create that new heavens and new earth. And he, God will dwell with man. And he will dwell with man forever. And that is his eternal purpose. And God wants us that as we live with him in eternity. That is our hope. As we continue to serve him in our lifetime. In that, in that day. We will have that heavenly life. With God. And it is my desire. Also. That many more people. Many more people. Will know God. Know the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in Him, having that new birth experience and the Lord Jesus Christ in the private life and going through His pub public life, fulfilling the Great Commission, and at the end, being with God in our heavenly life toward eternity. So, this whole God's master plan that I have shared to you. First, as we said, part one, the private life, a personal life. Like I said, you not choose me, but I chose you. And that part two, our public life, as written and appointed us to go, we need to do that responsibility of their commission. And part three, to that eternity dwelling with him, as it said, be fruit, fruit that will last. This lasting fruit he, that he desires is toward authority. Forever and ever in the time. So, in this God's master plan, this I showed it in details to several lessons. And you who are watching this video, I encourage you, to watch my videos on my channel and watch lesson and learn from these lessons. From part one, the private life, part two, the public life, part three, the heavenly life. And you will understand the God's master plan for us. Is this this is my desire? That as you go through this devotional series, you will continue to understand through the Holy Spirit teaching us the, the overview of His master plan. So, to those who, who are watching, thank you for watching this video. And I just gave that announcement before we pray. That in my future videos, after sharing this God's master plan, I will share to do the gospel of Christ overview. And we we'll begin to learn how God accomplished his master plan through the gospel of Christ. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for this day. Thank you Lord for the time that I will share to you this third part of this overview of God's master plan. I pray God for those who are watching this video, give them understanding and to, to teach him Holy Spirit as they go through the videos of God, the first 20 videos about God's master plan. I pray Lord that all of us will grow in knowing you 
and many more people will know you also. Lord, thank you. We give you the rest of our time. Thank you for everything. We pray this with thanksgiving in our heart. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Have a blessed day. Keep saving Jesus as we continue to live according to God's master plan. Let it be that we live our life to be faithful to God in our life. Thank you for watching. Till next time. And to God be the glory. Yeah.